I mean, she's everything. She's our world. She, you know, everything we want to carry on in our life is through her. She basically suggested right off the bat, do IVF. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Um, you know, can't we try some other things first? Because you always hear about how expensive IVF is and, you know, the success rate, is, you know, you're not guaranteed anything. Um, so we had tried rounds of Clomid and, and IUIs, intrauterine inseminations, and those didn't work. And then um, just didn't have a real good feeling about it, and so we... We're like, well, maybe we do need to do IVF so we can have a baby and, you know, our best chance. Um, but I didn't want to do it at that clinic. I just didn't have the right feeling about that clinic. And the way we found was, out about Dr. Gruner was, I, I have... But um, he, was, he was like, oh, hold on a minute. The real thing that you want to know with patients is why they're not getting pregnant. And the way I approach patients and, and talk to them is that there are four things that are really keeping people from getting pregnant. Either they've got a problem making eggs or making good quality eggs, either they've got a problem making sperm or good quality sperm, they've got a problem making an embryo, or they've got a problem with embryo implantation. And we have to focus on one of those four reasons. And if, for example, the embryo can't implant, IVF won't help them. The hardest part about becoming pregnant is implantation. That's the step where the embryo attaches to the lining of the woman's uterus. It's something like planting a plant into the soil. If you don't have healthy soil, no matter how healthy the plant is, it won't grow. And the same thing happens in pregnancy. You might have a great embryo, but if the lining of the uterus isn't healthy, you won't have a pregnancy. In terms of looking at implantation, there are only a couple of things we could look at. and We looked at the uterus and the standard evaluation was an HSG. We did an HSG x-ray and it told you about the shape of the uterus. We could look at an endometrial biopsy and just look at you know, standard uh, microscopic appearance of the endometrium. And then when ultrasound first came along, we had the ability to look at the thickness of the endometrium and we could say, gee, a thicker endometrium looked better. You know, back to the garden analogy, if you had 12 inches of topsoil as opposed to one inch of topsoil, you figured your garden probably was better. And for the most part, that worked out fairly well. People started looking at the endometrium maybe 50 years ago, but the way they did it is they would take a biopsy, they would fix the tissue, and just look under the microscope. And the problem with that is it doesn't really give enough information for us to figure out who will get pregnant and who won't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So about 10 years ago, we started doing research on this, and we used molecular markers, actually looking at the cells themselves to see which cells were normal and which weren't normal. And by using those markers, we've now been able to develop a panel that look at this. And putting that together, we call that the endometrial function test. The endometrial function test can tell the doctor if the patient's endometrium, basically her soil, is receptive for embryo implantation or not. The endometrial function test starts off by a doctor doing an endometrial biopsy on a patient and sending that sample to our laboratory at Yale University. The tissue is converted into glass slides, which are then stained, cover slip, and then looked at under the microscope. I look at the overall architecture. I look to see if there's any infection or any other problems with the endometrium. And then I look at specific markers, the molecular markers, to see if the endometrium has developed normally or not. Once I've done all that, I put together a report for the doctor and the patient. In this case, it's a normal EFT, and that says to the doctor and the patient, you can go ahead and do the transfer. In this case, it's an abnormal EFT, and that's a warning sign. It says to the doctor and the patient, maybe you need to fix this endometrium before you put the embryos back in the uterus. The most common causes for an abnormal EFT include endometriosis, hydrosalpinx, where the fallopian tubes are filled with fluid, women who are either too overweight or too underweight, women who have reached the perimenopause, the period just before menopause, and even stress can cause an abnormal EFT.
Even though Carrie wanted to do IVF right away, Dr. Grunert said, no, we shouldn't really do that. We need to figure out why you haven't been able to get pregnant. And the way he did that was to take an endometrial biopsy and send it to our laboratory at Yale so that we could perform an endometrial function test on that sample. What we found out is that it was very abnormal. That told Dr. Grunert and Carrie that he had to do something first to her to fix her, to fix the soil to make it receptive for the embryo. The way he did it in her case was surgery. He removed an abnormal fallopian tube that was preventing her from getting pregnant. Once he did that, he repeated the EFT, and when it came back normal, it told Dr. Grunert and Carrie that it was now time to do the IVF cycle. So I was getting really discouraged. But I would much rather get discouraged doing all the preliminary workup than going through a whole cycle of IVF and spending all that money, and it, it wouldn't have worked, you know, so. Approach the EFT with patients. Uh, we've, I think, we've gone over where we use it when we talk to patients. We get an abnormal EFT. The first thing we do is stop and talk to patients about it and say, look, we found this. These are the potential causes. I think in August. It came back good because I remember I got by the time the results came back it was in September and that's when the nurse called and said you know you can now do IVF so it was literally nine months no pun intended <laughs> of testing and and you know making sure my body was ready and then lo and behold we did in vitro and it worked on the first time so it worked for us. We need some more work on shit. No, that's no. I think any test that can help determine what you need to do to get you ready for IVF, you need to take it. <laughs> the most exciting thing for me is to be able to help couples achieve their goal of becoming parents. The EFT has allowed doctors around the country to help couples like Carrie and Peter achieve their goal. If you'd like more information about the endometrial function test, the soil test for the endometrium, please contact us at our laboratory at Yale University or visit our website and any of these ways contact us and we'll be happy to let you know more about the EFT and how it may be able to help you achieve your goals.